just got back as the youth ministry. We just got back from our winter retreat. And we want to thank all the parents. We want to thank all the people that helped us, that backed us up. You know what? All your work and all the stuff that we did for winter retreat and all the, you know, those late nights or what we did to get to winter retreat, let me let you know, it was not a waste. You see, we went to winter retreat and God was able to move in such a powerful way. This was my first winter retreat. And you see those kids that, you know, some of them that we really don't see them praising the Lord or we don't see them at the altar. I, I want to let you know that we seen some people we never expected at that altar. They were broken before the Lord and God moved in such a special way. You know, bonded, like people were like friends were made, like close connections. Like we had football and we placed third place, hallelujah. Out of 32 teams, we did a great job. And I just want to like remind you guys, man, when you guys help us out and you guys back us up with food sales, you guys are doing so much. You know, you guys are helping us out so much. All the women that helped us with the food sales, all the men that, you know, all the people who blessed us with finances, we thank you. But tonight we have a very special video for you guys. And this is just a small portion of what God did. But I just want you guys to turn your attention to the screen as this video shows a little bit of God's glory. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a praise for that. Man, we had such a good time. You see, God moved in such a powerful way there at Winter Retreat. We had an awesome time. And so many people were touched. So tonight, we just want to call up some testimonies. We want to call up Dylan. We want to call up Gabby, Sonia, Clemente, uh, Aaron. Hallelujah. As they make their way up, give them a hand. It's not easy to come up here and testify. But I know that the Lord touched them there at Winter Retreat. And Brianna, if you could make your way up as well. Hallelujah. You guys could come. Woo! Luke, if you could make your way up as well. Thank you. Hey, guys. How you doing? I'm really nervous. Um, dude, this is iconic. Iconic. An iconic winter sheet, an iconic year, an iconic moment that, that was just shared with my basically like my family and I got to be able to uh really just get in touch with God and just be able to uh, really uh have my start my own relationship that like I know I had but like you know took it to that next level or you know, like get back in I like to uh thank Pastor Ezra and uh Aaron uh, for uh you know really uh Talking to me, talking to me, and trying to like really you're trying to get me to go to winter retreat. I was I wasn't gonna go, but then I was like, I got the, I got the last one. I was the one who got the last, I got the last winter retreat little little thing. It was, cool. it, was, it was a cool 
it was a cool moment to just like you know like God wanted you here you know like yeah, but they, they want you here but uh thank thank you thank you for uh and, uh, thank God I thank God I thank uh, Pastor Sonny I I didn't expect him to be there that was that was insane like that was. I don't know, I feel like I was like at a celebrity, like at like a like a concert, like it was all Kanye's here, like no, like that's Pastor Sunny. <laughs> but uh once again, thank you. Uh what's up? I'm Nathan, you guys know me. Alright. <laughs> so- <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh so basically so this was my first year, like this is my first winter retreat, and honestly, pretty good. But like, <laughs> like I met, like I met a lot of people, hung out with friends, and it like honestly, like, like it's a great experience, and it like changed me. Like God touched me too. Like God, yeah, yeah. Sadly, however, there was no snow. So. <clears throat> False Adam Titan. <clears throat> Good evening, church. Um, <laughs> um, I just want to thank, you know, Pastor Sunny for the vision. I want to thank Pastor Ezra and Sister Ruthie and my home directors for allowing me to go. Um, the week before that, I was I was getting really attacked, and um, I wanted to leave the night before, you know, and now I know why, because God spoke to me there. And um, it was a blessing to spend my 18th birthday there and not out here on the street, you know, and... Um, just spending it in his presence was a big thing and um even as i was out there i was getting attacked you know family's birthdays you know i wasn't able to be there but i was able to be in the presence of god and that was the best gift god could have given me you know i didn't think i was going to see an 18th birthday but this year i did and it was at a winter retreat and i thank all the gang girl leaders you know um i had a really great time and um i wanted to leave i i wanted to leave you know and i was really going through it and the last day, um, you know, it was a winter retreat, but the pastor started speaking about the victory home. And he said, whatever you do, don't leave. And someone yelled in the back, confirmation. And Yvonne was like, take it, Bree, you know. And I did. And I refused to let the enemy, you know, attack me over there. I refused to let him take everything because I worked so hard to be sober. I worked so hard for this salvation, you know. And I was just blessed, you know. I have an awesome church, you know. My directors are awesome. Pastor Ezra, I thank you, you know, for opening the doors, for allowing me, you know, to hang out with youth. I never hung out with people my age. So just to be around, I felt like God gave me everything back, everything the enemy took from me. God gave it back, you know, and I'm really grateful, and God bless you, and thank you. Hey man, uh, you know, the winter with you was awesome. It was awesome. It was definitely life-changing, and, um, and, you know, and I'm just, I was so glad to go, and now I know how important it is to go when there's a, a retreat or international event, you know, because God just begins to remind you, and he fans the flame again. So now I know next time I see a, a retreat or event like this, you know, I need to be there. You can't, you can't um, like, uh, compromise that you need to make it, you know, because that's where God meets us at the month's top, at the retreats. You know, so, uh, you know, God definitely, you know, just just uh, uh, brought back those promises, you know, and that fire back in my life. So it was awesome. Awesome. Super awesome. <laughs> Man, winter retreat was amazing. You know, it wasn't, um, it's not just about the service, you know, like, man, there's a whole bus ride there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> every, every, every other hour, every other hour. And whoever made that, whoever made that edit, there's like thousands of pictures of people sleeping, but they just want to choose me for some reason. Oh, but, um, you know, <laughs> besides that, um, you know, the services, they're great. They're, they had some of their best pastors there, and, and you know I couldn't help myself but feel broken. Um, at, I think the last night of winter retreat, and not even at the altar, but from my own seat. That's how far God came to reach me, you know. And I found myself right there, surrounded by you know friends and families that I had known for year years, and um, and it was 
was just great to be touched and um, also football was really cool. We got third, but you know, it's cool. I was a little butthurt. I know everyone was. All I, all I heard is L.A. Harbor, and I was like, oh. but um, you know, um, God bless everyone. And yeah. Man, um, I just like to thank everybody for the opportunity to be able to go over there and have a great time with everybody. I really liked um, the PK service. It really spoke to me, and um, it was just a great opportunity to be able to go over there and God to touch me and everybody, and like everybody had a good time and got in touch with God, and yeah. Hi, church. My name's Sonia. I just want to say that I had uh, such an amazing experience. Um, this was my first rainy retreat, and I didn't, I didn't know what was going to happen, but you know, I, I'm grateful that God provided the way for me. And there were people who really took the time to sponsor me. And, and you know, with God's faithfulness, he got me there. And even our bus, like, that thing was expensive. But we had over 40 young people from our church. Um, like, that's, that's all God, you know. And there's more people that when we go to gang convention that we want to take more. You know, we're believing to double. And and with God's faithfulness, he's, he's going to make it happen. And... Um, I had a I had a blessed time with the girls and just being able to connect with them the the gang girls you know God God gives me a burden for them like I I cry for them I break for them you know because I know they have potential there's there's something inside of them that we got to reach from them and you guys are all a part of it you, you know the church you guys play a big role in our youth being able to invest in them your time you know just reaching out and and taking them you know go talk to them love on them that's what they need they need people to do that you know it's it's important it's very vital this generation right here these people like god touched them you know and i and i i said that i'm believing you know for more salvation and it, it makes me so um emotional to see you know our young people go to the altar with their hands lifted broken because that's what it's about that's where God does his healing. You know, I, I had that moment too where I was running from God, but he, he touched my life and I've never been the same. It just takes that one touch and God can change everything. Don't give up on them. Keep, keep at it, keep working with them. Invite them to the church. There's people here who really care. There's people who really love, you know, the youth and we have good leaders. We have good pastors, you know, and we're, we're led by God. This is a church that is led by God. This is all God's faithfulness. God is bringing us from glory to glory, and he's not going to stop. As long as we stay on the right path, he's not going to stop, and we're going to see more, more miracles happen. I'm believing for something to take place in our youth. Our youth, we're going to be the next wave. There's going to be a wave of revival in the youth. It's going to be our time, guys. It's not time for us to push back. We're going to keep moving forward. Hallelujah. Thank you. Um, my name is Gabby. Um, God really spoke to me at this winter convention. I was so glad to even make it. I, when I found out that it was sold dead, I was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> so many people went. I did not know what a full house looked like until I went there. And oh, my gosh, there were so many young people. The altars were packed out. Um, the bus right there was really fun, too. <laughs> um, God really spoke to me. I I want to go to the UTC. I want just I want to pour into these young people because I know that they're hurting. I was once one of those young people. I was once one of those young people that needed God in their lives, that needed to be spoken to, but to even be able to see people come through that door who looked exactly like me when I came through these doors was such a blessing and I hope to pour into this next generation and I hope to tell my story to them so that they know that they are not they are not alone in this they are not alone in this because God has always been with them God has always been with me and I needed to come to church to realize that which is sad but you a lot of these kids need to realize that nothing is out there for them nothing is out there for them they need to be in the presence of God because only then will they find breakthrough and will they find peace and understanding of what's going on in their lives God bless you amen hallelujah 
Give it up for our young people. Wow. You guys can make your way down. Great job, guys. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Were you listening to the lyrics? The heavens are telling, telling the earth how great you are. Amen. Isn't our God great? And just, um, I just want to share with you just something that the Lord has been ministering. Um, before I introduce our 10 minutes, um, we were there, uh, the, it was the last night with Pastor Izzy, and he said um, that in one day we make about 32,000 decisions. And my son was sitting next to me, and he was like tripping out on it, right? He was like, 32,000 decisions in one day? And, and he was just like, it really caught his attention. And I remember um, in the altar call, um, I told one of the girls, like, in one day we make 32,000 decisions. Imagine in a week, in a month, in a year. And I told her, but out of all the decisions that we make, there's only one decision that can change our life. Only one decision that can change our life forever. And Pastor Ezra on Sunday was... Um, was ministering and he was he he was reading off of John 10 9 or not John 10 10 right where it says that the thief does not come except to steal kill and destroy and to have um it, it, but he came to give us life and life abundantly but before that verse on verse 9 it says this is and this is Jesus speaking it says I am the door if anyone enters by me he will be saved and he will go in and out and find pastures. And I was thinking about that one decision, right? He's like, and he is the door. And when we enter, we can go in and out and find green pastures. But the devil comes to kill, destroy. And, 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 I, and I was just, I've been just thinking like, Lord, one decision. Out of all the decisions we make, one decision it's all it takes, just one decision. And um, I read a, I read a, um, a post or a, a quote, a quote that it says, you have one life to live. And then, you know, cats, they say they have nine lives, right? But we only have one. It says, you have one life to live, but if you live it right, it's good enough. One life is good enough if you live it, if you live it right. And I was just, I just been thinking about how good God is. You know, we went up to the mountaintop. We seen what God can do in these young people. We came back and then, and, and I just been, every single message up there was just speaking to our young people about the times that we're in, about, you know, it's time to make that decision. Um, and, and I was just thinking like one decision and I, and I wanted to share that because I know there's some young people here, but I know there's also like a, a regular church congregation here. And if you haven't made that decision, I just want to share, um, you've seen what God has done in these young people. I just want to share that we're living, our, we're living our best life with that one decision that we make. Can anybody relate? Has anybody made that one decision and you can say that you're living your best life? I was listening to this song in, in the morning where, where um, Maverick City, where it says, you keep on getting better. And I was just thinking like, man, Lord, you just keep on getting better. Like, and we have this idea of when we're young and, and, and maybe not even just when we're young, we have this idea that everything's gonna be taken from us when we make that one decision that everything's going to be taken from us or that everything's going to all of a sudden be boring or, or, or that, you know, our life's going to just look completely different. But let me tell you, I am living my best life and I have people here in this room that can testify and say that they are living their best life. So one life is good enough. But we got to make that decision because the devil is out to destroy he is out to kill, but he says that he is the door. He is the door. And when we enter, we find green pastures. And, um, and I just want to leave you with that. 32,000 decisions. 
in a day. Up to 32,000 decisions in one day that we make. Some are maybe conscious, some might be unconscious, but nevertheless, there's still decisions that we make. But one decision can change your life forever. Forever. Amen? And um, I want to introduce our 10 minutes. Um, this is a young girl, a young gang girl that I know has made that decision because she's radical for God and her love for the Lord is shown in, in everything she does, in her serving, in her worshiping, and in, in, in how she, she, she pours out herself on the people around her. And not only that, but she just recently started a Bible club in her high school. That's radical, man, that is radical. And she's there every Thursday with, with her group and, and she's pulling, you know, her friends, the people that she has influence around there and, and they're there being a lighthouse in their high school. And, um, and we love her so much. She's so special to us. She's a big part of what we're doing here. She's a big part of the team. And I wanna introduce Sister Vettel. She's gonna be sharing with us today. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Is anybody excited tonight? <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, sorry, I just need to do that because I'm always like nervous. So I'm all like, oh my God. I'm like, I'm gonna sing. Um, but anyway, man, um, I'm just so, so grateful, man, to be up here. Um, you have no idea how, how grateful I am. Um, Um, man, just to come back from Winnerichi and just to see, man, the the fruit of our labor, like us leaders, like we 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 cry, we we pray for, and we soul for our young people, man. We're believing in them, and we all we do is just to see them broken in God's presence, and and man, just to see them like that, and just to see that, um, our young people up here, man, it just broke me. Because I'm like, man, all those hours I spent crying, all those hours I spent, man, man, praying for you, reaching out to you, man, man just calling you, just texting you. It's, and, and now that, that I see, man, they're up here, they're, man, they have smiles on their face, they're glad to God, and they, they experience God, and that's just, man, sorry, that's just, I just want to glorify God real quick. Um, but... Man, I'm so grateful to speak uh, to you guys, and uh, I'm most thankful for Pastor Sonia and Sister Julie, man, for this ministry, because I wouldn't be here without them. My parents wouldn't be here without them. Man, they were taking people like us, a church that is filled with addicts, filled with drug, me drug members, I mean, uh, gang members. Like, man, like, that's crazy, like, to think that a church would be filled with so much diversity and, and, and God would be able to touch them. You know, it, it just it blows my mind. And I also want to thank Pastor Ezra and Sister Ruthie, man, to just making this church and just to spend your time plowing um, here with us. And I'm, I'm so grateful for you guys. And I'm also great, grateful for the gang team. A shout out to them, man. I love them so much. Hallelujah. And at this time, I'm just going to pray. Father God, we just thank you, God, for your, this time with you, God. God, I pray, God, that you would go before me, Lord God, and you would speak, God. God, touch the hearts, Lord God. Lord, I pray, God, for transformations, Lord God, and, and change perspectives, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. And um, right now, um, or the message I want to speak to you guys is endurance. Um, what endurance is, is the ability uh, to empower to overcome difficult situations and, uh, and hardships. How many of us love our church? Man, I, I love this church. I love what we're doing here. And in, in this church, man, we're growing beyond the norm. We're, we're doing uh, many other churches aren't doing right now. You know, during the pandemic, when I was there at the school, I was like, dang, we're still going. Like, like, even in the, uh, the other Francisquito, I was all like, dang, we're in the tent. It's, it's all cold. I was like, bro, like, everyone's all, all like, just like, ah. I'm like, all right, praise God. I'll just go with it. And, man, like, you wouldn't see this anywhere else. And, man, I, I'm so grateful. And, um, and you know, um, 
And I believe that more is going to be happening in, um, in this time. And I, and uh, even at winter retreat, man, I, I was thinking, I was like, man, God, you're, I know you're going to do something radical, like bringing like over 2,000 people in a in an auditorium and, and them just praising God. Man, there's something going to be happening in this new season. And um, I want to bring up one thing that Pastor Ryan spoke. He's saying that, the, that um, there's going to be a time of sifting. Well, what sifting is, it, it, it's basically like a weeding out process. It, it, it's, it's basically checking your relationship with God or are you stable or, or it's going to be revealing your weaknesses. It's going to be revealing some stuff that, that, that you held deep inside and, and that process is going to be happening. And, and God was just reminding me that, man, this is the time where, the, where uh, God's not playing games, like God's coming back. God, God's not, uh, uh, um, God's coming back and we need to be ready. And, um, and, uh, and in that sifting process, uh, it's going to hurt. It's going to get uncomfortable. There's going to be rocks from my past that are going to be appearing. And so we need to be a people of endurance. We, we can't be shaken by the, the sifting. We can't be shaken by uncomfortability. We can't be shaken by getting out of our comfort zones. And, uh, and I want to ask you tonight, why should we endure? Why should we prioritize endurance? It's to overcome and to declare. We need to overcome the, the lies of the enemy. Uh, and this time as we're going, we're excelling. Man, we can't get caught up in, in, our, in our past. We, you know, even in my life, man, as, as our church is going, I find myself growing with it and, and being stretched and being pulled. And I find there are certain areas I didn't even know I was dealing with. Man, uh, uh, certain areas of anger, certain a- areas, uh, man, my old depression, my own anxiety, like, coming up. And and, and, and this time, like, I, I really, like, want to prioritize endurance because, like, we can't get shaken up by what, what God's trying to do. God's trying to get us ready. God's trying to get us ready. Man, he wants all his children, all his people in heaven. We need to be ready as this church. We can't be we stuck uh, um, we need to endure. Uh, um, we need to endure the, the the hardships. We we can't let the enemy run our lives. Uh, and, and to in order to and overcome, we need to declare God's word, man. Over the lies, over the God, the enemy wants to attack you, man. Um, pa, what, uh, over there, at winter sheet, they were saying that that if the enemy can't pull you down, he'll pull you down with your weaknesses. Like he'll pinpoint certain targeting, uh, targeting certain places, and, and the enemy will, will will push your buttons. He'll poke at you. He'll see if you're stable. He'll see if you're you're on that firm foundation and we need to endure we need to be ready with the word and be like devil i'm not going to be shaken i'm not going to be moved by what you say because i believe in a god that's stable and firm god's word is a double-edged sword it shall not be moved by anything else It, it can cut through anything Hallelujah. It's mightier than, than any lie. It's stronger than any attack. Our God is able. Uh, another reason why we should uh, prioritize or why we should think enduring is important is we need to endure for our goal. You know, for this, this reason, man, it holds dear to my heart because it just basically reminds me of I, I endure for my reason why. Why, why do I plow? Why do I sow? Why do I take time to, to be here? Why do I worship? Why do I speak in front of you? It's because we want to we wanna see the things that we, we dream to, to, to come with us to heaven. Man, I, like my reason why is our youth. I do this for our youth. Man, I plow. I take time. I practice every day on this stage. Man, I, I practice my word. Man, I read my word. I pray for them to get saved. Man, I'm praying for my family, for all of them to get saved. Man, I'm believing that God will move into my family. I'm enduring the process, even though I'm uncomfortable, even though I don't feel like doing it, even though that a lot of stuff God is calling, to, calling for me to do is uncomfortable. I still have to endure because I want to see them saved because I want to see them at this altar dancing with me man you know what what God spoke to me he said that endurance will, will bring the opportunity of freedom 
you know, enduring and, and plowing and making way, it, it allows for others to come in and to have that freedom with you. You know, we're saved, we're touched by God, but are our family members, are the friends around us, are our circle free? You know, uh, God always has been speaking to me like, man, we need to be the light. We need to be the lighthouse. We need to be the, the place. We need to bring in our people so they can see, man, there's freedom in God. Man, there's something different. It's not what other people say. It's not some religion. It's a relationship that brings power, that brings love. It's not something fake. And, um, and man, um, I just want to say, what do you, why are you fighting for? What is your reason why? You know, when we're enduring, when we're, when we're going through this battle of life, we, we got to remember our purpose. Because if there's no purpose, there's, there's no plan. There's no, you, you can't move. You, like, it, it's blind obedience. Even though blind obedience, sometimes it's good. Man, just is blinding look after God. Like, man, God, I'll obey, I'll, I'll go. Like, if you, if you want my yes, I'll, I'll say yes. But when, when a soldier has blind obedience and, and fighting for something they don't believe in, then, then they're, they're just going to fall. They're just fighting for nothing. You know, and I just want to um, put that out there. Um, um, and I, I can tell you all this stuff. Like, I can tell you to keep on going. I can tell you to push. I can tell you to keep on believing, keep on enduring. But what, what are my words, you know? But, but I know what the Bible says. It says in Hebrews 12, uh, verse 2 through 3, it says, We do this keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perf perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disre disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Think of all the hospi uh, hosti uh, oh my gosh. hostility he endured from sinful people. Then you won't become weary and give up. Basically, what the scripture means is that he endured. He, he did it for us. He endured the shame. He endured the mockery. He, did, he endured everything else. He endured the beatings, the lashes for us. Man, when I think about it, I'm like, God, who am I that you would endure for me, that you would, you would go through the pain for me? Man, it's because he loves us. Man, because it's because he wants us to, to see us last. He wants us to see us saved. He wants us to bring his children to him. And I just want to let you know that, that man, that another, uh, that, um, that man enduring, it, it, it'll show whether your pain was worth it or if it was just a whim. Man, I don't want to be that person where I just go off my emotions and like, oh, yeah, yeah, God, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, I'll, I'll do whatever when I'm feeling good. But, oh, it, it hurts too much. Like, I don't, I don't want to, uh, uh, not that area, not this place. I don't want to, like, I want to be that Christian that will that, take two steps back when God's telling me to go forward. Like, God, had, yeah, God went through so much. God did so much for us. So the least we can do is endure. The least we can do is push, man, for our young people, for our kids. Man, if you're believing for your marriage, if you're believing for someone to get saved, man, just endure. Just keep on going because Jesus did it for you. He did it for you so you can be free. He did it so you can feel the love of God. So I just want to let you know, man, enduring for, for, for God is not in vain. It's not in vain. All for him, man. He, when you feel tired, when you feel weak and you can't keep on enduring, man, God's so good that he'll keep on refreshing you. He'll pour out. As you pour out, he'll pour in. Man, as you, as you pour your life out, as, you, as you're saying like, man, God, I'm spending so much hours, so much time praying to you, but God, I don't hear you. Man, he's pouring out on you. He's pouring into your life. You can't see it. You might not feel it, but man, God is content continuously pouring into you pouring in blessings and I just want to encourage you tonight that don't get weary don't get stuck in in, in the in the norm of, of this life saying that that drinking is cool smoking is cool man going out to parties is cool giving your life to this is cool but man 
Nothing is better than enduring for God. Nothing is better than serving him with your people. And I just want to let you know that. And right now I'm just going to pray out. Father God, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for all that you're doing, God. God, I pray, God, that you would open up the hearts of your people, Lord God. Lord, that even though that they may feel weary or weak, God, Lord, that you would remind them that you are the refresher, God. Lord, that you pour out, Lord God, for them, God. Lord, that you won't leave them stuck, God, without strength, Lord God. Lord, fighting the enemy by themselves, but you'll go before them, God, as their shield, Lord God. And we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Sister Ezra, Sister Ruth, the opportunity, the trust that they've given us to, to come and to just be a part of what they were already doing. The young people, the team, everybody here, they were already doing it. Amen. And we just got to come and we got to be a part of it. And I want to thank everybody who sponsored us to go to Winter Retreat. Amen. I want to thank you so much for uh, making that happen and the victory that we got, right? And, and our heart, right? And we, we, I remind the team this all the time. Our heart is broken for those churches that don't have, uh, that don't have a youth ministry like the one this one has. For those other cities that didn't get to bring all their young people. Those other cities that have those young people and want to come to Friday night or want to come to gang service. And there's just nothing there for them. And, we, you know, we want to keep our heart there with those people. But for today, we're going to celebrate the victory that we got. Amen. Hallelujah. We filled up a bus. Amen. And we went up, up, we went up there and we took and we were up there right with the big churches. Right. And, and we give God glory, uh, you know, just because of what he's done. But I hope that you're understanding the severity of the moment here tonight. I hope that you're understanding the importance of what God is doing. You know, listening to Nate and watching the girls come up here and share, right? Share uh, uh, the song here with us today. It was a big deal. It's a big deal. For us, it takes a while to come up here and, you know, settle in sometimes. And this is an intimidating pulpit. I mean, this is Pastor Ezra's pulpit right here. And it's like, right, it's intimidating. And the caliber of men that come to this church is not easy to come up here. So I hope that you're understanding uh, what's happening here this evening. You might say, hey, you know, I came to church. I didn't come to church for this. It's a little bit of an unorthodox service here. But we really want to highlight because how many have children here? Raise your hand like this if you have children, right? And I know you love your children. But you know what? God loves your children more than you love your children. I mean, you probably didn't think about that. Right? But Pastor Tom said, isn't it good to know that, that God's got a hold on you and his hold is greater than your hold on him? And God's hold on your children is greater than our hold on them sometimes. And that's encouraging to know. It's encouraging to know that God loves our next generation. God loves our next generation. And as we, uh, uh, I'll pray very quickly and uh, we're just going to finish. We won't, we won't take very long, but uh, Father, we just love you, God. I pray, God, that you would just give us the wisdom and the clarity in your world, God, in your word, Lord. Speak to every single person here in this place, God, as we highlight your young people, Lord. We love you and we praise you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And we know, uh, you know, a while back, Brother Robert said something in his message. He said, and he was speaking to the men. He was speaking to the men in our homes. It's just men in society and men in the church. And he said, if the men die, everything dies. And I thought about that. I said, man, that's true, right? And I use that. Well, you know, anybody that I talk to, anybody I speak with today, I'll let them know, hey, brother, if you die, everything dies. Everything's depending on you making it, right? But I was thinking about that also, about our generation and thinking about, you know, if our young people die, everything dies, you're only as good as your last generation. Legacy is not, about, is not about what you've done in your life. Legacy is about what you leave back. And if we fail to reach the next generation, if we fail to reach our children, then we have done nothing at all. But sometimes it's easy, and I'll be honest with you. We went up to winter retreat. Hallelujah. Pray for me and for my wife. Amen. It was not easy. 
Right? I was dreaming. Chocolate, chocolate sells, food sells. No, Lord, no. Stop, stop. Please. No more. You know, we had to come up with $11,300 to get to winter retreat. That wasn't easy. But we believed and we said we got to get our young people up there because we know that God can do more in one moment than we can do in a whole lifetime. If we can just get them there. If we could just get them to those altars, if we could just get them to those mountains, if we could just sacrifice right now. And it's so encouraging to see that God did his part. Amen. You do your part, God to do his. We understand that. But it's not over yet. And as we got there and as we were there and we had some struggles, can you imagine how hard it is to get 55 people off of a bus at a gas station and then get all 55 of those people back on that bus before you leave? Every stop. <laughs> I was like, no, I don't want to stop no more. Let's just go home. <laughs> it was a complicated situation. And I, and, and, I, and, I, and I was reminded by God why the ministry of Victory Outreach, there's no other ministry like Victory Outreach. Because here in Victory Outreach, amen, here's where we deal with the knuckleheads. Here's where someone dealt with you. This is the church that I was able to come to, amen, when I was young and, and I was shooting up drugs. And, you know, I grew up in juvenile hall. A lot of people might not know this, right? We've shared this before. I didn't go to high school. I dropped out in the eighth grade. And all the other four years, I spent them in juvenile hall. And then when I turned 19, I went to prison, right? I was young. I was out there. And you know what? I, what God's really been impressing on my heart lately, and it makes me want to cry every time I think about it. And, and I, I, I talk to young people, and I say, look, man, out of all the negative things in your life, just hold on to the positive, the little bit of positive that you have. You know, Friday night might be the only positive thing some people have. I didn't have that, right? I didn't have that growing up. I didn't have that mentor. I didn't have that person looking, up, looking out for me. I didn't have that person me telling me, like, you know, this is not the life that you want to live, you know. Uh, I didn't have that person. My parents really, you know, they did what they could. But my dad died an alcoholic. My dad died of cirrhosis of the liver. He wasn't really there for me. There was nobody there to guide me. And I think about what if there was a gang ministry when I was growing up? What if there was a youth pastor that would have reached out and said, hey, Moses, man, you don't got to live that life. What if there was? But you know what? As we went up there, I just was reminded, and sister, you know, she hit on that, uh, that we have to fight for our generation. Pastor Ed Morales, uh, a while back, he shared a message on, uh, on, on when Jesus stopped and he said, and he looked and, uh, and, he, and he saw the multitudes and he said, and, and, he, and he saw the multitudes with compassion, right? But he said that that moment when he stopped, it's not like the moment that we think about sometimes. He said when Jesus stopped, he stopped and he saw them with compassion because he didn't just see the multitudes right in front of him. But he's seen the generations and generations. He's seen the pain for generations. He stopped because he understood. And we're here and I hope that, you know, uh, sometimes we get in a place with, with our young people. Sometimes we get in a place with our teenagers. Come on, man, you got a teenager. I got a teenager. Sometimes we get in a place where it's easy to lose hope. Sometimes we get in a place where it's easy to lose heart. Sometimes we get in a place where, 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 we've, where, where we're kind of discouraged a little bit. Amen. And we see in 1 Samuel chapter 17 and, and verse 32, we see that there was a situation right there uh, going on. And we see that David shows up and, and we all know the story, right? One of the most famous stories in the Bible. And there was two people. There was an army on one side and the army on the other side. And one of the, uh, one of the champions, the Bible said, from the Philistines would come out and he would challenge them to a fight every time. And, and what happened is that he had the people of Israel discouraged. They really didn't have a way out anymore. They really didn't have an answer for what was in front of them anymore. And we see uh, here in this passage of scripture that David shows up. And, and David shows up and he's young. And, and he shows up and he begins to say, well, why is everybody afraid of what's going on? 
And then he tells them, tell the men to not lose heart. Tell them, to, tell, them, tell them that I'll go out and I'll fight against this uncircumcised Philistine. They had begun to lose passion. But when you see the difference, and I'll, and I'll let you look into this later in your own time. But when you see why they were losing heart, and, and th this is not an absolute, right? So I don't want to, I don't want to teach it as an absolute so I want to bring out sometimes the thing the little thing from the men in black when I say stuff and just flash it so you can forget right it is not an absolute but but I've noticed in the bible that when 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 uh, uh when Goliath was defying the armies he was defying the armies of Israel and the armies of Saul he wasn't defying the armies of God or at least I don't see it in scripture. So it appears to me as if the battle that these men were fighting, they were fighting in their own strength. And perhaps this is why they were trembling. Perhaps this is why they were afraid. But David knew how to fight in the strength of God. David shows up and he has an unprecedented courage. He has a, a valor about him that, 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 they, they, that was surprising and encouraging to him. He said, don't worry about it. Don't, don't, don't lose heart. I got this. And then the, the giant comes out and he says, am I a dog? Are you sending a young person out here to fight with me? And he says, don't worry about it. I'm going to cut your head off today. Because he says, you come to me with the sword and with the javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. Of God of the arms of the armies of Israel. He was saying, This is not my battle. This is God's battle. This is God's battle. This is God's generation as you stand to your feet with us here this evening. I I'm convinced, man. And I don't know if you agree with me, but I'm convinced that there's no parenting. And sometimes the more we say, the, the, the worse it gets. How can you relate to that? How many remember being young? I remember I was 17 years old, and I remember my mom and dad tried to come get me from out of, like, you know, wherever I was using drugs. And, and I just made up my mind that I wasn't going to listen. I'm not going to listen to you. Do what you want. I ain't following you. It just made up my mind. Just when someone makes up their mind, if this young person makes up their mind, you ain't getting them out of it. How many agree with that? How many remember that? There's nothing that we can say. When we get to the end of the road and your hands are tied, you have to come to the realization that this is a spiritual battle. That this is God's battle. And it, it takes from us. It takes from us. To understand that maybe I can't parent my kids to heaven. But I'm going to pray them into there. And I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you. And I'm going I'm to be honest with you guys here this evening. And. I feel like sometimes our young people have taken a back seat in the church. And you know why I feel that way? Because I've had to fight very hard for some people to release these young people. And you know what? Sometimes we're discouraged about our kids and the way they're living. But sometimes it's just easier to not bring them on Fridays. It's a little cold. You got home from work and it's late. But I want to just challenge you. We believe that something is happening here in Big Two Outreach West Covina. In our young people. 
And there's two times when you see smoke during a fire. You see smoke when the fire is going out. And you see smoke when a fire is starting up. I see smoke. I see it. I feel it. We're coming here and we're having powerful altar calls. And we haven't even got started yet. And God is already moving. God is already challenging. God is already speaking. And I've come to realize that it's not something that we can do on our own. What happened up here with these testimonies, I wish we could bring everybody up and say, everybody share something. Everybody, come on, let's share. Share what God did in your life up at Winter Retreat. That only happens when God moves. I want to challenge you here today. If you have a young person, connect with us. Connect with some of the team. He said, I want to see God do something in my, in my, in my teenager's life and in my young person's life. Connect with us. Come talk to us and bring them, bring them on Fridays. Get them connected. Let's get them in there so that God could begin to move. Well, on. thanks for joining us here at Victory Outreach West Covina. We hope you enjoyed your time. Also, I want to encourage you to subscribe and click the notification bell. That way you get notified every time we go live. You won't miss a service. Stay connected with us. And you can also partner with us in your giving if you want to bless the ministry financially so we can continue the work that God is doing here. You can do that at any time. I hope you share it. And I hope you come visit us live real soon. God bless you.